Okay, so so you're gonna we're gonna start out. Are we already recording? Oh, we've been. Yeah, recording. we're just gonna work out. We're just gonna. I'm Jack Rudy, and um, I started tattooing in 1975 with Good Time Charlie Cartwright, whom I met in 1973, who agreed to teach me the fine art of tattooing if I was patient and didn't bug him or any other shit until I was out of the Marine Corps, which I did, I waited, started working for Charlie in the summer of 75. So that was only a little, I don't know, what was that, 44 years ago, but who's counting? Hello, my name is Good Time Charlie, and I uh, acquired that name while working at the Pike. The radio was playing Good Time Charlie's Got the Blues, and and the, my uh, customer who had been back many times said, "Well, you are Good Time Charlie. You never have the blues." And so that's what started it all. They all started calling me that, and then eventually it just became it stuck like glue. Uh, catching a. Uh, the last bus out of town at midnight in Wichita, Kansas at the age of 15. I uh, was standing on the, the corner going one, way, one direction and an old man standing on the uh, opposite corner going the other way yelled and asked him if he had a, a match or a lighter. So when I ran over there and he fired up his Zippo, I leaned in to look in, looking at his uh, the V in his shirt and he had a lot of darkness in there. And, and I said, hey, how many tattoos you got? And he said, one. And I said, let me see it. So he took his shirt off, and wow, I, it was, his body was tattooed like a jungle. It was just the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And, and I said to myself, wow, I got to figure out how you do that. You know, I remember I was at the Pike, though, one, one time with my folks, and uh, they had three tattoo shops there, and I was probably five years old. I think it was in front of a, it, it would have been Burt Grimm's at that time, Bob Shaw's later, that they had um, photographs of, of, of sailors and other tattoo lovers in the window with, like, say, a guy with a big chest eagle or something. I remember it was like, Mom, wh what are these? And can I have one? And then she's, no, Stan, those are for sailors, not little boys, and et cetera, et cetera. And it was like, but I didn't know. You know, she said, those are tattoos, and they're not for little kids. And, and, uh, but I still, I, that didn't mean anything to me. I just knew that I liked that visual, and I wanted one. And I met Charlie when I was actually 19, uh, out of Marine Corps boot camp with a, with a homeboy, Terry, uh, of mine. We went down there to the Pike and went in all three shops. And uh, the last shop we went into, there was this uh, kind of long-haired biker-looking guy, Charlie Cartwright, also known as Good Time Charlie. And we met him, and, and, and uh, Terrence and I thought like, hey, this guy looks fucking cool, let's hit him up. Well, when I was at the Long Beach at West Coast Tattoo, they came over and asked me if I could tattoo that. I says, well, why not? They said, I don't want any color. Is that cool? And, he, and Charlie goes, that's the way I like to do them. He says, well, boy, we looked at each other. We never heard that from a, a tattooer before. They always want to do color. So we looked at each other like, wow, what the fuck? That's so cool. A couple months or sometime later, Jack brings somebody else that he had drawn a tattoo on and had me do it. Meanwhile, Jack picked up a scrap piece of cardboard and when he left, when his friend left and I was cleaning up the shop, I picked up that cardboard and I thought, wow, I'm looking at maybe 10, 10 different styles of cholo writing, uh, some pretty serious cursive, uh, a lot of cartooning that's pretty funny and uh, and a little taste of seriousness over here in the corner. I knew I wanted a tattoo but not as necessarily as a living as something like that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna be a tattooer 
No, it wasn't like that. I knew I wanted to just get some machines and tattoo my friends, and, and I didn't think that far ahead, like, well, oh, maybe I should do this as a profession, you know? And, um, but after getting to know Charlie a little better, because I went back and visited him several more times, you know, o over my two-year enlistment, you know, and it's at one point he told me uh, that uh, he'd like to teach me. But I told him, I says, that if you give me your mama or your grandma's phone number, someone who will always know where you are when the time is right, uh, I'll break you in because I'm going to open up in East L.A. and I just got to find the right spot. I remember mentioning to him that I thought East L.A. would be a great place for a shop because between the cholos and bikers and, and lowriders and just in general, I thought that would be a great place. You know, a lot of tattoo lovers in East LA. It just so happened that Charlie had been thinking the same thing. And he said, like, I'm gonna open up a shop there. How'd you like to come to work for me when I do? And well, he didn't have to ask me again. I know for more than a year, or at least a solid year, I looked and, and uh, for a location. Every Sunday, I would take a drive all the way down Whittier Boulevard and I finally saw that building and I hair went up on my neck. I knew right then that was the spot. Charlie opened his, his, his own shop there in East LA and I came to work for him there. That was, that was my first uh, uh, you know, experience with professional tattooing what was in East LA. You know, needless to say, it was perfect timing. Not only for him and me, I guess, but for for black and gray tattooing in general because it was it was the forerunner of things to come, you know. So that began a uh, beautiful friendship and uh, tattoo relationship and, you know, the rest is all history from there. So Charlie and I started this new style, black and gray fine line, single needle. It already existed but it existed on the streets and in the prisons. That's where that all got started. But we were the first guys to ever do it in a shop. We figured it out with three needles and moving one of them forward, you know, so only that one was penetrating the skin. And it was because the shop was in East LA and our customers, our customer base that was East LA and all these, you know, surrounding areas, this is what the, what the homies wanted. A real tall fella, probably a couple of conventions back, kind of scooped me up and he made the comment, Charlie, there's two kinds of tattoos in this world, right? I go, yeah, I guess. And he says, well, you got colored traditional and then you got the black and gray world. And I go, yeah. And he goes, half the world is doing that now, Charlie. And just think, you started that. And I go, yeah. And he goes, it's a BFD, man. It's a BFD. <laughs> To me, it was just a, an ordinary thing that became a phenomenon. You know, I don't know. I, th I think people had probably asked me before, like, hey, man, you know, you or you guys ought to do a book about Good Time Charlie's. And uh, anyway, it was a great idea. And, and again, you know, uh, here it is, man. We're both really, really happy uh, with the results, and uh, I think everybody that has seen it so far, uh, you know, will concur with those findings. First of all, I thought it should be a combination book for me and Jack, because we're kind of tied at the hip uh, in the ink department. I thought the success of Good Time Charlie's is not just me and Jack. It's all these guys that have carried it on and made it what it's become. We started working on the project probably eight years ago, something like that. Of course, it took so much longer than we ever thought, even after we were done. Even after we were officially done writing and got everything together, then it took you know quite a while to uh, finally get it published and, and printed. There's the individual stories of many, I would say, bona fide tattooers that are in this book. I think it's a, a heartfelt written book by everybody that contributed. I thank each one of them individually for 
the ones that did. Unfortunately, about half a dozen or more have passed on to greater things. Because even people that have known Charlie and I, or, or Coyote, or, or, you know, or Mahoney, or any of these people from back in the day, are still going to learn so much information and anecdotes and stories and so forth. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. And anyway, so it, I think people are going to really, really dig it, you know, just because there's just so much crammed into this giant mofo. Plus, if you hit somebody with this, which I don't recommend, you'd probably knock them right the fuck out. Well, thanks for spending time with me, listening to me ramble on about many things, and some that are informative and probably some that are not, but thanks anyway for it all, and be sure and keep your eyes peeled for this book. It's a must-have for your library, your tattoo library, I must say. Look at that. Every page, every page is just chocked full of, uh, hey, I want to read this disclaimer in this book. This is good. I want to read this. While writing this book, Good Time Charlie and I have tried very hard to be as accurate as humanly possible in recalling the details of events and stories within these pages, as I'm sure everyone else who contributed to this project has as well. That being said, however, our memories are often flawed. Sometimes we believe we remember something a certain way only to realize at some point in time we were mistaken, quote unquote. Someone else that was present at that time may remember things very differently. Even Charlie and I don't always remember everything the same, but we don't necessarily disagree either. We just have our own memory versions of the same story. As you will see throughout this book, after all, some of these memories go back 30 to 40 or more years. Some of you reading this book may remember differently too. Well, that's one of the things that makes life so interesting. Don't you think? Well, it's been an incredible story so far. We hope you like it. Or else. The Godfathers of Fine Line, Good Time Charlie Cartwright, and yours truly. Thank you very much. Thank you.